Hello. Welcome. We have all at some point in our Christian journey had a feeling or a belief that we are stuck in our spiritual lives. For the majority of us, we never moved a step beyond accepting Christ. So the change we see in our lives is that we begin to go to church, if we were not doing so already. Maybe read our Bibles when we remember to do so. And pray when things get tough or when we are excited. We have no desire to be zealous for God. Somehow we feel comfortable where we are. We say to ourselves. If I don't do anything crazy, like commit some big sin. I just might make heaven. And that is good enough for me. Deuteronomy 1.6 says. The Lord our God said to us in Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. The excitement of the Christian life, and life for that matter, is the excitement of growth. Surely, you would be very concerned. If your little baby remains an infant, just lying on its back, and not making any attempt to crawl or walk, just looking the same as when you first gave birth to it. But that exactly is what is wrong with many Christians. We are stuck at Mount Horeb. We are unable to conquer sin in our lives. God says it is time to move. It is time to get into the wilderness. It is time to be tested. It is time to be zealous for the Lord. It is time to ditch the milk and take on hard meat. Before we continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. Today we will be concentrating on growing in the likeness of Christ. Growing in Christ is a process whereby the Holy Spirit produces in us the likeness of Christ. This growth is what is referred to as sanctification. Romans 8:28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. What purpose is God talking about here? Verse 29 of Romans 8 answers for us. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. What Romans 8 28-29 is saying to us is that. God will make all things work together to conform you to the image of his Son. That is the will of God for you. That is the plan of God for you. 1 Thessalonians 4 3 says. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Why is sanctification, also called holiness, important? Because God is holy, and as children of God we are also to reflect that holiness. We are told in 1 Peter 1.16. Be holy, for I am holy. And Hebrews 12.14 warns us. Pursue peace with all people, and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. What do we mean by sanctification? It is the process of God's grace by which the believer is separated from sin and becomes dedicated to God's righteousness. It is the act of making us holy. It is an act performed by the grace of God, whereby our affections and desires are purified, where we turn our backs to sin and the world, and turn to God, separating ourselves from sin and the world unto Christ. It is the process that breaks the power of sin in our lives. Romans 6.14 Sin is no longer your master. But were we not sanctified when we first believed? When we believe in Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus makes us holy in God's eyes. Our old filthy garments of sin are taken off. And we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. We pass from spiritual death to spiritual life. And become a new creation in Christ. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, 
old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. This is a single, moment in time event that occurs when we first believe. This is solely the work of God. The believer has no hand in it. It is God who causes the sinner to see the glory of Christ in the Gospel. It is God, and God alone, who saves the sinner through Christ. Hebrews 10.10 says. We have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This sanctification which is imputed to us when we first believed is called positional sanctification. Let us say, at this stage, you have the seed of holiness, or the seed of Christ-likeness in you. Now God expects you to grow more and more like Christ. Grow more and more holy. And so Paul prays in 1 Thessalonians 5:23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. This shows that sanctification is a process that continues all through the lifetime of the Christian. So the writer of Hebrews writes, for by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified, Hebrews 10:14. This process of sanctification will go on till we die. That is when we are referred to as perfect. Before that, we are simply works in progress. And how does this come about? We have learned that the first phase of sanctification is entirely the work of the Holy Spirit, the believer has no hand in it. We cannot work for our salvation. We cannot add anything to the work that Christ has done on the cross. But when it comes to growing in holiness, it is both us and the Holy Spirit working hand in hand. That is why God commands, Be holy because I am holy. Implying that you and I have a role to play when it comes to being holy. Let me put it this way. It is the Holy Spirit who enables us, and empowers us to live in holiness. So Paul says Philippians 2.13 says. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. We are not passive observers of the work of the Holy Spirit. When it comes to progressive sanctification. A process which goes on as long as we live. Philippians 2.12 says. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Romans 6.19 tells us too. Present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. The Holy Spirit empowers us to work out and to do the presenting. It enables us to say no to sin, and yes to righteousness. But we must do the fleeing from fornication. The Holy Spirit will make a way out of the temptation for us. But we, must flee. So it is the Holy Spirit working with us to overcome sin. And pursuing righteousness. Through the enabling of the Holy Spirit, we must. Put to death the evil deeds of the body, Romans 8.13. And Paul lists all the works of the flesh that must die in us in Galatians 5.19-21. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, and so on. I warn you, as I did before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Finally, we must walk in the Spirit in order to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law, Galatians 5.22-23. The Spirit of God dwells in every believer. And provides the necessary supernatural power to overcome. The flesh, which opposes everything of God in you. And gives you victory in the ongoing spiritual war. As we surrender to Him daily and are filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit. He gives us the desire to obey the commands of God. And we are able to obey in a manner that is pleasing to God. God bless you.